Hey, what's up? It's Chanel, and welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we have a collection update thanks to Joshi Rotten, and I grabbed the new Worm record on cassette. I will go over that just a little bit, give you a little taste of what I think about it. But we're going to be blasting some Delaware death metal in the form of Head Split Records reissuing Corpus Rotus Rituals of Silence. Fuck yeah. I actually had this test press in my hand that King Fally sold, uh, sold to my local record store. And I put it back down just because I'm an idiot. I was like, ah, I wanna get like a regular version of it. Cause it was like black and white and I don't know. I was just being stupid. I should have grabbed it, but it sounds great on cassette. If you've never heard this, it's an absolute East Coast death metal classic from Delaware, where I just came from. And King Fally even produced this bad boy. But I had to go to Delaware to get my MRI and MRA done finally. But thank you, Josh. Corpus Rodus with Rituals of Silence. Now, I was legit, like, I, I hit Josh up after he sent this to me. Like, I knew he was sending me blood, uh, impulse to destroy. I had no idea it was the fucking Wild Rags first press from 1989. Like, I, I hit him up immediately and was like, yo, man, like, y you know this is, like, the first, like, cassette press and stuff. Like, this is on Wild Rags, 1989, brother. And he was like, yeah, it's cool, like, enjoy. It's, like, brand new, like, they must have found, like, a stash of these. Because, like, like, it's legit, like, brand fucking new. And I, I love, like, sometimes when you get, like, a first press, like, instead of having the tracks right here, like, it gives me a little bit of the distro in, uh, info for um, Wild Rags. Like, if I want to get, like, Demo 4 from 1987, $5. Demo 5 from 88, that's $6. The Demo Rehearsal from 88, that's $4. Stickers a dollar each, twelve dollars for a T-shirt, but then it tells you who's in the band and whatnot. But I just think it's very, very cool and interesting, and it's definitely one of my favorite Blood albums. I now have my three favorites: uh, Ogos Pathine, Christ Bait, and now Impulse to Destroy. Like, I'm beyond fucking grateful, Josh. Like, you have no idea, man. This is a big deal to me. Like, it's one of those albums that I just fucking love. Same with Corpus Rodus. Like, this is something I just, you know. Like, I knew Head Split had copies, but... Here's one I don't really know much about. Um, it's just kind of plain pro tape. And... I'm just gonna put this out there. Even when I make like a mixtape, I make a cover. This is just lazy. I'm sorry, maggot vomit after birth. But like, I don't know. Sometimes you gotta. Like, it's cool that it's DIY, and you know, I appreciate that stuff. But, like, even, you know, like, some of my mixtapes and shit, like, I, I try to put covers on them with, like, artwork and shit. I'm not gonna pull a bunch of stuff out, like, but if you've ever gotten one of my mixtapes, you know what I'm talking about. I'm actually looking for, uh, this one killer, uh, gore grind one I have just cause it's like one of my favorite covers I made myself uh, but here's one 
I mean, it's not the best example, but my Eternal Rock Coffins uh, split. And then I, so I know it's a, I mean, obviously it's a dub, but I actually enjoyed doing stuff like that. I know not everybody might, but yeah, I don't really know that much about Maggot Vomit, but this is the Afterbirth demo. But next time, make some cover art. It's just one of those things, like, it's kind of like back in the day when somebody would just hand you a blank CDR and they'd be like, this is my band's demo. And like, it wasn't in like a bag or anything. It was just a lo like a loose CD. Like, I'm not listening to that. But if you hand it to me, like in a jewel case and you know, like there's a cover to it and you obviously care. For example, like here's a cassette demo that I feel was done extremely well for being DIY and that's from Fatal Agent like they did a cover and everything even though they didn't use like you know pro tapes from a company or whatever they just used like the CVS kind hey they still have physical copies of their music and I think that's fucking cool but uh where are we Oh yeah, Defenders of the DB Disphere with fucking sa uh, Soul Scars. Very, very stoked to have some Disphere back in my discography. Killer, crusty, hardcore. Big Disphere fan. I really like their newer stuff too, like Live the Storm. Great fucking rap. Live the Storm, so fucking good. Uh, misanthropic Generation. Uh, or Misanthropic Generation. And then we also have the Chronic Injustice demo on Head Split. Some ripping fucking thrash metal. This is awesome. If you like ripping thrash, you can't go wrong with this demo. It is gnarly as fuck. Hails the chaotic injustice. Like, I was legit blown away by just how, like, savage this is. It doesn't sound like it was from, you know, 2021. But, I'm super stoked on what Joshi sent over. Again, fucking hails. And here we have Worm for Everglade. Nice nod to their Gothen and Evoken. Now this record, I'm actually a Brad Moore cover art. Fantastic. Really like the purple cassette. It's very similar to the Atramantius release. In case you did not know, both bands took inspiration from their Gothen with the font. So you might be like, wait, what? And they're the same color too? <clears throat> no, it's all inspiration. And here's where I legit am jealous for some of you who have never heard this band right here. And hopefully I find it like immediately first try no run-ups that band is called disembowelment now if you've never heard disembowelment i highly recommend checking them out either before or after you've heard worm but also imagine if you know Disembowelment, imagine if Disembowelment got together with Mortuary Drape and like they decided in Mortuary Drape to add like guttural death metal vocals at times, you would have Forever Glade, but also the old goat lord inspiration. It's there. The 
gourmet inspiration is there. The guitar solo is fan fucking tastic. Definitely harkening back on the ancient sounds of Florida's past. But I'm legit, like, there's some, you know, there's so many influences on here. It's incredible. But. I was hearing a ton of gourmet and disembowelment, but there's so much on here that's more than that. Like the aesthetics and whatnot that Phantom Slaughter and company take. I really like, you know, like how they take it seriously. Like, this could have been some long-lost Funeral Doom record that no one ever heard. And you wouldn't know. But so many bands, even Cathelists, have, you know, used that their Gotham influence with the font. But, like, that's why I legit, you know, like, if you're a fan of, like, Unholy also, you're gonna love this. There's so... It's pretty much... Every one of my favorite Funeral Doom albums put into one that happens to also have a really, really heavy death metal edge. And it's just fucking fantastic, especially when the, you know, mortuary drape uh, elements come into play and whatnot, and you start getting that, like, legit gloomy feel and whatnot that remind me of album number one, Evocation of the Black Marsh, which came before things really blew up for Phantom Slaughter and Equamanthorn with, um, I'm sorry I'm not grabbing the LPs, but the tapes are right here, but with Gloomlord. If you liked Gloomlord, this is a massive step up, like, Songwriting wise, this is album of the year, but is it the most original thing? No, but that's what makes it, in my opinion, so fucking good because not only did they do their influences justice at times, I think they might have outdone some of their influences. And the fact that this album right here is really helping to bring a whole entire new generation into the Funeral Doom underground. I really hope, you know, Forever Glade by Worm sets off a bunch of bands going more in the atmospheric direction while still being devastatingly heavy. Because that's the thing about Funeral Doom that I personally love so much from bands. And especially if you like this Evoken record, Quietus, you are absolutely going to adore this album. But there's so many influences on here. And like I said, all of them are positive. There's no like shitty influences. Like, the clean vocals, even, are just fantastically done. This is grade A, top shelf, funeral doom. And if you don't believe me, I don't know what to tell you. But if you're new to the subgenre, I'm legit jealous. Because I wish this was my introduction. Because it's pretty much perfect. Like, there's parts on there, even, that, like, go down... I mean, technically, the Ripakalu route, but, like, there's definitely some spectral voice vibes, like, you'll hear it. I mean, like, I was joking with my guitar player, because we, we just wrote, like, a 12-minute Funeral Doom song. I was like, yo, man, like, we might have to rewrite that, like, fuck, because Worm really hit it out of the park here with Forever Glade. The hype is real. I mean, like I was saying, you know, I'm a big fan of a lot of the influences that are behind this record. And 
that to me really, really grabbed my attention and, and the fact that they took those influences and made them even better. Fuck yeah, Phantom Slaughter and everyone involved. 20 bucks spin records. If you ordered the vinyl, it's gonna be a while. I think January. There's the Corpus Rodus tape. But uh, it's worth the wait, honestly. Like, it's such a good fucking record. Like, when you hear it, you'll know exactly why I said, like, it, like just wait. You'll be fucking stoked. Like, don't take a sneak peek on, you know, Bandcamp. Just, just wait. Because it's just one of those albums that just fucking rules. But thank you again, Joshi. I'm gonna blast some fucking blood. And this is uh, Wild Rags number 14. That's fucking sick. But that's today's collection update. As always, thanks for watching. You fucking rule. Hails.